Autosomal linkage. Okay, so what is an autosome to begin with? An autosome is any chromosome that is not a sex chromosome. So in humans, we've got 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes. Um, two of them are sex chromosomes. So that leaves us with 44 regular chromosomes or autosomes. So that's all that it means. So autosomal linkage is basically when you have genes that are on the same chromosome or what I'm going to call them here as an autosome. So genes that are on the same autosome are linked. Why do we say that they're linked? Well, it means that during meiosis, during independent assortment or independent segregation, whichever phrase you prefer, they're going to stay together. They won't be separated. If they're on separate chromosomes, they will be separated or can be separated during independent segregation. So if they're on the same chromosome, they will stay together during independent assortment. You may call this independent segregation. Different examples, different teachers are going to vary. Choose whichever one you're most comfortable with. Both are going to get you the marks on the exam. So what does this mean? If, they're, if they stay together during independent assortment, then that means they're going to be inherited together. So let's just look at this graphically and see if I can show you what I mean by this. I'm going to draw a pair of homologous chromosomes. So if you don't know your terminology here, you're going to really have to make sure this is absolutely crystal clear in your mind because you can't use the words that you don't know the meaning of. So homologous pairs, let's do a quick recap. Now I'm going to draw these as double chromosomes because this is during meiosis. I'm going to draw one homologous pair in green and it's going to be effectively empty or hollow and the other one is going to look the same but I'm going to shade it in to show the, that it's, it's, that they're partners. So if you do need a recap, I'll just put down here quickly, homologous pair, homo means the same. So what is the same? Well, they have the same genes on the, at the same loci or loci or, and, but they can have different alleles. So for this example here, I'm going to put, a gene locus here. Now, if we remember that these are chromatids, each half of the, this one is going to be identical. So if we've got the allele big T for tall, for a tall plant here, we must have the same allele at this position. And in the same locus on its homologous pair, we're going to have the same gene, but we might have a different allele such as the dwarf allele on this one. And exactly, I'm going to do another gene locus down here. Maybe we've got we take our red and yellow, so capital R is dominant as, ye as red, and lowercase r is going to be recessive and yellow. So let's pretend this is our parent. So we've got one of these chromosomes from our parent, whose genotype would be big T, little r, and the other parent will have given us the other one, which is little t, big r. Okay, so during independent segregation or independent assortment, during metaphase one of meiosis, the homologous pairs are going to line up next to each other. It's random which one goes to on which side, and these are going to separate. So if they're on separate chromosomes, all the chromosomes are going to be in a line down here. If they're on separate chromosomes, then they're not related to each other. But we say that genes that are on the same autosome or same chromosome are linked, because if, you, if whatever this allele is, you're going to get this one too. Okay, so let's put this into some other writing. This is going to affect the normal, the expected phenotypic ratios that you'd get from a dihybrid cross. And normally when you do a dihybrid cross, you're going to expect the phenotypic ratio is 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. But because these guys are inherited together, it's going to behave a little bit uh, more like a monohybrid cross. So it's almost as if they're the same gene effectively, or that they're linked together, which is exactly what they are.
And typically a monohybrid cross is going to give us a three to one in the F2 generation ratio. But I don't want you to focus too much on, on this ratio here. What I'm going to give you next is the most important thing that we need to know in terms of autosomal linkage. And it's that autosomal linkage means that more offspring will have the same genotype and phenotype as their parents. So we'd expect to see more of the offspring being big T little r and little t big R than you would otherwise normally expect if these were on if these genes were on separate chromosomes. So in, I'm just going to put in brackets here. We can see that the parents' genotypes are big T, little r, and little t, big r. And there's one exception to this. So I'm going to put unless. This is unless they are separated. These genes or alleles are separated during crossing over. So crossing over the other element of meiosis, which contributes to genetic variation between the each generation. So I'm going to draw that as a diagram here. So I'm going to draw my two pairs lined up um, that are going to be doing their crossing over. This one's going to go underneath. So copying, these are the same chromosomes, autosomes as we've got from up there. So I'm going to put my it's big T, big T, uh, little t, little t. And down here, I'm not going to do the one on the underside. It's just going to make things a little bit confusing. We're going to have little r. This one is going to be on the light one, going to be little r. The one underneath is going to be big r. I'm just going to label these two because it's going to be, I don't want it to be too confusing down there. And so, what happens after crossing over? Well, let's draw them again. So this side of this one is unaffected. This one has crossed over. So the bottom bit is going to remain light because he's swapped over with his homologous pair. Likewise, the, the tail of this one has been swapped over as well. So this half of this chromosome unaffected with our lochia still unchanged so we can put them in so this one's going to be big t but and has the top swapped over no it hasn't so that remains the same t's are going to be unaffected down the bottom we've got th this half hasn't changed so we've got little r but now we've swapped over we've got the dark one over here so this is going to be the big r allele this one comes from over here, so this is the little r, and again the outside half of this one doesn't change, remains like this. So this is before and after crossing over. Now I might put another allele in here, but let's get this nice and clear first. So the reason why normally most of our parents are going to have, we've got this genotype, we've got this genotype, so continuing from that, I'm going to say that the majority of offspring will have their parents' genotype and phenotype. Some will have different genotypes and phenotypes because of crossing over. Okay, so let's put the parents' genotypes in here. So we had big T, little r, and we had little t, big r. 
these were the parents' genotypes. So the, the possible genotypes that can result from here, we could have, obviously, big T, little r. We could have, also, we could have, after crossing over, this shows us here, we could have big T, big r. We could have little t, little r. And on the outside, little t, big r. Now, if you look at, let's say they do a cross, it could be on any organism, really, um, you're likely to see, what are we likely to see? Well, we're likely to see this parent's genotype overrepresented and this parent genotype overrepresented. So you might have numbers something like in a cross, the offspring, there were 497 of these guys. There was, you know, expect a similar ratio, um, obviously, because of random fertilization bits and pieces, not going to be perfect. Um, and as a result of crossing over, you might see... I don't know, 37 of these and 42 of these. So these guys here are the results of crossing over. The only other extra tiny bit of detail that I'm going to add to this, it's complicated enough as it is, but I'm going to say that the closer the loci of two genes on an autosome, the more closely linked they are. And why is this? Well, if I were to represent a third allele on this autosome, then let's say it's down here and it's Q. Uh, this one can have big Q. I'm not going to draw the middle ones because it's going to be confusing. And this one's going to have little Q. Well, it's clear that if R and Q are right next to each other, this one is obviously unaffected. These are going to be swapped over together. So there's a closer link between the, the genes R and the gene Q than there is between them and T. And this is just because if crossing over takes place, R and Q are more likely to go, jump ship together than T because T's at the other end of the same autosome. Probably not so likely to come up. Most important here is that the, the offspring in the results of autosomal linkage are more likely to have their parents' genotypes and phenotypes. And the, the results of a dihybrid cross is not gonna give you the typical nine to three to three to one ratio. They're effectively inherited as one gene because they are on the same chromosome. So the results are more like a monohybrid cross. Be wary of this number though, because obviously this doesn't represent that very well. They are the key bits that you're gonna to need to know and they're linked because they're on the same chromosome. I hope that's as clear an explanation as I've ever seen. And I worked hard to try and make that as clear as possible. If not, then leave some comments in the section on the video and I can refilm it and make it any better.